A weekend getaway at a remote cabin with just a man, his new squeeze, and the family dog. What's the worst that could happen? Good boys, a Norwegian horror movie, and since it's from Norway, if I butcher any of the following names, I do apologize. This comes to us from writer, director, Vilar Bo, and centers around a couple particular people. Christian, not Sister Christian, all your time has come. Because Christian is a rich boy. Na 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 na. And he has all the money in the world, but he just wants a new girl. Christian is played by God Loke, and he's looking on a dating site. Tinder, Tinder for Norwegians, I assume, which I assume is still called Tinder. And he finds Sigrid, played by Katrin Lovis Upstad Fredriksen. That is a, that, that's a lengthy name. That, that's a lengthy name. So yeah, since it's uh, Norwegian, unless you speak Norwegian, bust out the subtitles. <coughs> It's available on Amazon for seven to eight bucks, depending on the tax breaks that you get in your particular area. It's from Saban Films and others, and yeah, it's in Norway. And, well, basically it starts off with Christian, you know, just taking care of the uh, family dog, taking care of the dog and everything, and then Sigrid... Uh, gets a message from him because he thinks she's really cute and they meet and <coughs> they date and things hit off really well and then Sigrid realizes hey wait a second there's something a little bit weird about this home life but I'm really desperate for a relationship so let's just see how this goes and then yeah things get really weird things get really weird from there I'm keeping it as spoiler free as possible if you haven't even read the description on IMDb though the IMDb description gives a little bit but not a ton Let's just say things are not what they seem, and then various stupid decisions are made because when you have a psychological horror movie, I mean, dumb decisions have to be made to advance the plot, however deep, however shallow, however whatever it is. And it's a mixture of part romance, not bad romance, not na na woof 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 woof. It's a bark romance. God damn it, I should have said that first. And also psychological horror and just overall social commentary on what people are into, how people are judged for it, and from there we have a movie. Now, it is only um, 79 minutes, and that's with opening and closing credits, so at least it's breezy in that respect. And while I appreciate what the film was trying to say, the problem is it simultaneously feels rushed in parts and also stretched out. It's not a bad concept. There are good ideas here. The performances are decent. This did not hit for me at all. This this really didn't hit. <laughs> Mainly because I fucking called what was going to happen within the first, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> Actually, within the first scene, I called one of the twists. And then about 15, 20 minutes in, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I think I know where this is going. And lo and behold... I was right. Now, predictability does not mean that a horror movie or anything with horror elements is bad, but this just didn't work at all. You had very, very obvious twists, and it was what it was. It wasn't the worst thing I've seen this year, but it was not. It, it wasn't very good. I'm not saying don't watch it. Give it a shot. You guys might like it. I appreciated what it tried to do, but it unraveled very, very fast. Because you can obviously tell what's going on with one particular character and how nobody can see it, even if you're desperate to be with somebody. You can find somebody better. You can do better. Yeah, it just gets to a really, really stupid third act and a stupid conclusion that's obvious from the beginning. And yeah, I didn't really care for it. I didn't really care for it at all. Again, I'm not saying don't check it out. I look forward to seeing what the director and what the cast can do and maybe we can get... And even better, more fleshed out Norwegian horror movie uh, later on. But there we go. Yeah, it is what it is. So anyway, I'm going to get into spoilers. It's on Amazon if you want to check it out. <clears throat> spoilers really will not take very long, just so you know. Three, two, one. Warning. Spoilers. Okay, so spoiler, spoiler, spoiler section right here. Spoiler section. Giving you a warning. So the family dog is Frank. Frank is a man in a dog suit implementing a uh, thing called puppy play where a friendship or relationship involves somebody playing a puppy playing a dog that's weird that's really weird i don't kink shame but i don't get it. if it's between consenting adults whatever that's just weird that's just very very weird 
And also it kind of gave me a bit of a, you know, furry, like, you know, vibe, and I don't get that either. Again, not kink-shaming. You gotta do whatever the fuck you want, but it was very obvious that, uh, that Frank is a guy in a suit. And Christian doesn't hide that. And from the very, basically the twist I called, I said, Christian's either looking for a mate, or, you know, a playmate for uh, Frank, or he's going, or, or, or he's holding, um, or he's holding Frank against his will. I was right about both of them. Which I don't mind being right, because there are sometimes I can't call horror movies, but good God, they went about in the laziest way possible. This just, again, unraveled really quickly. The date goes fine, and then, you know, we see the video about puppy play, which is just weird. It's wrong. No, can't say that. Whatever. He doesn't act like a dog. He is a dog. But is he a shaggy dog? <laughs> and then they go off into, um, at the remote cabin, where it's very, very obvious that Sigrid escapes this whole thing before. Like, just goes home. And instead of being smart and going on the goddamn website, you know, dating site and looking for somebody else, her roommate encourages, well, he's rich, so be with him. <laughs> and then that obviously just goes completely tits up. Um, the cabin was made from old church materials in the 1600s. We, we needed to burn the heretics at this point. Let's put our phones away for the weekend. Yeah, that won't backfire with this person you don't fucking know. <clears throat> yeah, he's holding Frank against his will. Frank tries to um, get this to, uh, <clears throat> you know, get this information parted to her, but it turns out, oh no, Christian had this whole thing bugged because Christian had his suit bugged with audio bug things or the woods bugged or whatever. He got a hold of the audio one way or another. And then Christian gets more upset at Sigrid. And then uh, she had the opportunity to escape. She did escape while Frank is getting beaten a little bit later on. I'm describing this very, very, like, just blandly because there really isn't a lot to this. You don't care about Christian. You don't find him to be a villain that deserves his comeuppance. He's just goofy. Sigrid's an idiot. And I don't really get the whole thing. Frank and him were apparently old friends. He tortures Frank. Sigurd comes back with a stick. Hits Christian once. Just once. You only need to hit the villain once. That's how it always works out in horror movies. And then she gets KO'd. And now sometime later, they're at this area, this house. Frank's still the dog. Sigurd's now a dog. And there's a boy. There's a baby. They had a puppy. If this had been done as a dark comedy, I might have found it more entertaining, but this was just stupid. I mean, I'm sorry, this is stupid. Halfway decent idea. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I'm not saying don't watch it. I didn't like it. F gets an F. Not good. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.